One, two, three. Look at daddy. Look at daddy. Is that ASMR? There's nothing in there. Ugh. My arms. You're too heavy. <gasps> Adini. On today's episode of Free Unsolicited Cooking Knowledge. Thank you. <laughs> On today's episode of Free Unsolicited Cooking Knowledge, I'll be making my favorite non-alcoholic cocktails. Welcome back, my little spoons. I just wanted to say thank you for your support along my YouTube journey. If you haven't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. Every time I post a video, I'm getting closer to my goal and it means the world to me that you are subscribing and watching. And thank you for being kind and laughing at my failure in my last video, my homemade Cadbury cream eggs. Today's episode is a little different because I'm actually celebrating a huge milestone in my personal life and that is one year of sobriety from alcohol. <laughs> Your clapping is so loud. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I actually just wanted to share a couple of the cocktails that I have discovered along my journey, as well as drinks you can just purchase at the store. And I just wanted to share that knowledge with y'all. Even if you are not needing to get sober and you just want to have a cocktail without having alcohol attached to it, these are great alternatives. They're fun, they make you feel fancy, and sometimes it's just having a cold beer on a hot day. And I found some great supplements and great brands to purchase. None of this is sponsored. One of my biggest messages of one year of sobriety, it is a day by day thing and it is not easy. And from one hour to one day to one year to 10 years, every milestone is huge. I think by the time this video is released, it will be a year and a week. You know how Hollywood is. You got to pre-film these things. Before I get into the first drink, I just wanted to say I could not have achieved this level of sobriety without my support system. And I know it's sometimes hard to find a support system. I also had the help of therapy. If I could buy a box of $50 wine every two days, I could afford therapy. And honestly, I would recommend it. I just wanted to shout out my friends, family, and of course, Cody, who drives me nuts. I love you. Um, all right, so with that said, let's get into the first drink. So the first drink that I'm going to show you is actually the drink that I considered my vice for the last 12 years, and that is red wine. Could you blame me? I'm Italian. I'm pretty sure blood is red wine. My dad makes red wine. Red wine pairs with the best Italian foods, you know, except after dinner, I continue drinking. But with that said, it is one of the hardest non-alcoholic beverages to find that actually tastes like wine. It took me about nine months of trying all the store-bought non-alcoholic red wines and they all sucked and they all tasted like some old grape juice and it never paired well with dinners until my birthday of this past year, December 28th. Lucky me, one of my best friends in one of my support systems. She did a ton of research because she knew obviously with cooking and, and being Italian, she was on a mission the moment I turned sober to find a really good non-alcoholic red wine. And I think that she achieved that and I'm so thankful. So thank you, Adriana. So without further ado, the dry red wine that I have found now in your average Actually, no, this one you had to go to Zara's for, but it's in a grocery store. It is called Groovy, G-R-U-V-I, <laughs> Groovy. And this one's called Dry Red Blend, batch four. Ew, do you think it tastes like something different than the one I had in December? <laughs> um, anyway, with any red wine, you do not refrigerate it. That is sacrilege, okay? Cody likes it because you're a manja cake. You're not a real Italian. It looks like red wine. It literally smells like, um, it smells like a Merlot. So it's like a little sweeter than like the dry wines I used to drink, but. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. This batch seems a little fruitier than the one that we had in December, but it tastes good. If I pair this with cheese, like a strong cheese or like meats, like a charcuterie board or charcuterie board, as I like to say, this would be great. Like the notes of the wine would pull through to just have this. Yeah, like I, maybe it's just a little cold too. Like this is cold down here, but I'm trying to heat it up. I don't know, this is a great dinner wine. And I'm like, it, honestly, like well done, Groovy. Groovy, would you like to taste it? Also, I'd like to say that Cody has basically become sober too. He'll have the odd drink here and there, but. 
He's my support system. For red wine, so far, this is the best option I have found. So red wine is a check. Groovy wine, not sponsored yet. <laughs> All right, to follow red wine, I wanted to keep along the like bottle type drinks. This particular champagne took me a while to find. I don't know how we stumbled across this. Oh, on our East Coast trip. We were like, oh, let's try it. This is it. I have tried many of the non-alcoholic champagnes and Martini has come out over top with anything I've found so far in Niagara. Also, this is only my one year journey. Like I'm sure there's many others out there that are fantastic, but Martini sponsored me. Um, I think I cleared out like how many LCBOs of this? At least one. Um, just to have on hand, every celebration, including my one year sobriety celebration, always includes this. It's a little on the sweeter side, I'm afraid. <laughs> I don't wanna do this because I have many lights around here. I don't wanna like snap it. I'm scared. <gasps> okay. Whew. It fizzes, it's the same color. So fragrant. This, my friends, this is worth celebrating about. Martini, sponsor me. Cheers and uh, celebrating one year sobriety and to continue because it's been one of the best years of my life. I'm just saying. My life has changed for the better and I'm so excited about it. It's fun to get excited about life. I'm just saying, especially in these times. And you have to put it in the fridge. Like it needs to be crisp and cold. And that's the uh, champagne that I would suggest. Now that we've transitioned from wine and champagne, I'm getting into the beers that I like the most. And I'm going to start with the non-alcoholic Corona. This lovely beer actually put me into a crisis. <laughs> <laughs> this tastes exactly like the real thing and I can tell you why I know that because either something in the fridge got switched or I picked up the wrong beer but I think I drank about half and I took a sip and I placed it down and somehow I had picked up an actual like alcoholic beer and I, I like panic mode. This was like nine months of sobriety. I just felt so guilty. I felt horrible. Like all the emotions of like, che like cheating, I guess. And uh, thankfully um, Cody was there and so they didn't count which it didn't i mean it was only half a beer couldn't you just cut him off he only had half a beer as soon as i realized i stopped but that goes to show that zero percent corona tastes like the normal corona so if you're looking for a cold beer i mean i know it's a light beer and it's not like a full-bodied beer but if you're looking for like a nice cold beverage on a hot summer day that has zero alcohol corona is the way to go so one thing i learned is you roll out the lime to get the juices going and yes i washed it everyone calm down there we go look at that ah I'm not putting on a bikini, Tony. <laughs> uh, yeah, with like the freezing cold second winter we're getting. I squeezed as much as of the lamb juice I could in there. Um, my thumbs aren't big enough to do that thing that Cody does on camera. Ooh, yeah, I got tiny little guys. Tiny little thumbs, thank you. Um, all right. A source of vitamin D. See, your mood shoots right up without the alcohol. Right there. If you are trying to get sober, uh, just pay attention to the labels. <laughs> that was the lesson I learned. So, but kudos to you, Corona. Not sponsored yet. So this next drink is my all-time favorite drink. This is what truly helped me through my first year of sobriety. Partake, please sponsor me. It is a ghost. Gosse, Gosse. I'm not German. Just say okay. It. You want to try and pronounce it? Okay, so it's a peach Gosse, and Gosse. <laughs> Gosse uh, is how it's pronounced. And I guess Gosse is a type of sour beer, which I love. A great summer drink. Um, but I found this and partake. Well done. Their blonde is really good. Their IPAs are good. Their pale ales really good. Like it is the best all around for its flavor. The calories, I would say price. Well, I mean, 10 bucks for four. A little trick that I love to do is I like to get my beer mug. I like to rinse it and put it in the freezer because everyone loves a cold drink. So we're just gonna go ahead and pour that. There we go. Oh dear. Look, it, it fits it perfectly. It's like a little treat at the end of the day. I like it. 
it's just so good. It's just like, cheers. This is, now this is, this is a summer drink. And you can put this on ice. I've also done that. It's so good. Anyway. So for this next drink, I actually have not tried this. <laughs> I saw it in the store and I thought, you know what? I'm going to feature it on today's episode and that is a mojito. Okay, so I put four ice cubes in that. I have a few mint leaves. I'm going to rub it in my fingers. I don't have a, I don't, unfortunately. And a squeeze of lime. I'm gonna mix, mix, mix. Now the moment of truth on this canned mojito. Again, I just bought it at the grocery store. I didn't go anywhere special to buy it. Um, anyway, very chemical. Mm. It's not a mojito, but it's like an herb. Atticus. It's an herb flavored drink. Like I feel like I can't put my finger on it. They put spearmint in it and peppermint. It's earthy. It's not bad, but it's earthy. Taste it. You're not gonna like it, but taste it. <laughs> it's not a mojito. I think if I had some extra simple syrup, maybe it would look taste good. Oh yeah, not a fan, eh? Too earthy, yeah. I don't mind it. I feel like I need to add something to it to make it, you could add like a rosemary like and, and like raspberries to it to kind of like, marry those flavors i think would be really good with it um mm, but this is nice i can like play around with this it's not a mojito let me just say that it's a great sipping drink though i like it i'd buy it again but i tried different things with it but that's the mojito not mojito <laughs> now we're entering into my favorite of cocktails in general even when i wasn't sober and that is gin gin was always like that drink for me i love empress gin probably my top gin um because it has a lot of floral flavors in it but this gin i have actually never tasted before we found this little like mocktail store it was like in a little hole in the wall in union station um, and they had many non-alcoholic drinks from rum to whiskey to to gin and this one kind of caught my eye this is non-alcoholic spirits but it's 0.5 percent alcohol this is a very floral forward gin which i'm really excited to taste so i have my little glass i know it's a, a sailor jerry cup but i just like the size of it and um again i froze it and then i just have my little square ice cube in there and this one i'm gonna do like a simple one shot over ice there we go the aromas, I can already smell it. And then I'm just gonna give it a little squeeze of lemon. Oh, my ice cube got stuck. So cheers. Interesting. That, that is not what I expected from that. That is so good. It's not Christmas, it smells Christmassy. It, it's like I walked through my garden. I love that in the summer. Taste that. You're like, it's not my drink. <laughs> like I taste like oddly like celery. Cucumber. I was like, it was something. Where? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Rose, hibiscus, eucalyptus, violet. That's the other one. Organic cucumber, juniper berries. Yeah, elderflower. It's so good. Yeah, I was like, what is that? It's cucumber. See? Yeah, like the extra tonic to add like another layer to it. But like, that's like a nice refreshing after doing yard work, like sit on my back balcony in the evening, have a nice like shot of gin over ice or like gin and tonic. Oh my gosh, the possibilities. Wow, I'm so glad I bought this. <laughs> Don't know why I didn't read the label. I just saw it was pretty and I saw juniper and I was like, hell yeah, that's the drink for me. This is Lily approved. <laughs> And finally, this has been my favorite out of all the gin and tonics that I have created. Again, this is a variation of the Empress gin that I used to make as like a cocktail. So basically I have this plain 
gin. It doesn't really have any like forward flavors. So just your average gin. This is like the key to why this gin and tonic is so good and so close to home uh, for me. This is a elderflower tonic. Again, you can buy it at Sobeys, Zares, like any of the higher end stores. I haven't seen it at Walmart. This is the key lavender bitters. Um, I got a lavender lemon because I add lemon to it anyways, but you want the lavender bitters to enhance the elderflower flavor. I love flowery gins. I love earthy gins. Like this is me as we've learned earlier in this video. So I have my little coupe glass here. We're gonna go ahead and do one shot of the gin. Uh, I do more than one ounce because it's non-alcoholic. Yeah, who am I kidding? Even when it was. Two shots of vodka. In the tonic top that tonic up and then the lavender bitters i do about four. Oh, so this one just pours out there we go Ooh, that's fragrant and then just a squeeze of lemon and to top it off i garnish it with a lemon peel and a frozen blackberry um because the blackberry is frozen it kind of acts as like a little ice cube <laughs> It's like, I can't think of the name. And that's my famous gin and tonic cocktail. It's so pretty. With my little horsey decal. Mmm, so good. It does not taste like Empress. I just thought I'd let you know that. I'm still on my journey to making the perfect Empress dupe. Yeah. You feel fancy? Um, so yeah, cheers to gin and tonics. And there you have it, my little spoons. Seven different drinks that you can try. Basically, the combinations are endless. The game is changing for non-alcoholic beverages. I'm happy I made this decision. I am here living my best life, I guess, or trying to. I'm determined to do what I love and I'm not gonna let some silly thing like alcohol drag me down anymore. You can get creative with it, which is so fun. And uh, hopefully I inspired you with some of these mocktails today. I look forward to continuing my sobriety. I would be lying if I said it was easy. It definitely wasn't and I'm happy and I'm happy to be here for you, little spoons. I don't know, life's exciting, that's all I can say. Right, Cody? That's right. Cody's eyeing all the drinks he wants to finish. <laughs> Thank you, my little spoons, for sticking around this long in the video. I just wanted to say if you or anyone you know is suffering with addiction or mental health problems, there is an access line here in Niagara. It's accessline.niagara.com or you can call 1-866-550-5205. If you are not within the Niagara region, I will post links down below. Remember, not all addiction is the same for everyone and it looks different for everyone. So just a bit of encouragement. Um, harm reduction is just as helpful. And yeah, I, you know, maybe now is the time to start your life, your new life. It's exciting. Didn't think I'd be here in a year. Um, with that said, yeah, f addictions. All right, see ya.